There you are. Come aboard, quickly. You are not in uniform. No, I'm not. Is that wise? Would it not be safer to stay in uniform, unarmed? Did you bring any drink, any Heineken, Holsch? No. Any food? No. None? I didn't stop. I thought it would look suspicious. Everything looks suspicious, dear brother-in-law, everything. A meeting like this, for example. Yes, yes, so come aboard, quickly. You know, not much time we have. Well, now I'm here, I find I, I never expected, I just... I cannot believe you're at a loss for words, Peter. My very own loquacious philosopher has been rendered speechless. The world is upside down. It is not the world I know. Yes. How did this happen? God in hell. They bombed Rotterdam, do you realize that? After we surrendered, a letter was sent, laying down arms, we laid down our arms, and the Luftwaffe destroyed Rotterdam. It is not the world we know, it makes no sense. It was right to surrender, though. The army, not the people. I understand our surrender included only the army, the armed forces, not the people, not the country. Oh, semantics, face saving, that's all. You realize we had two divisions left to pipe? Two divisions left to reserve, in reserve, and Zealand was excluded. Zealand could continue to resist. More lives would be lost then, but more slaughter if they continue to fight. It is well we surrendered, so too must Zealand. It is well we surrendered in the long run, and for our future. So just throw down our arms and live peacefully ever after? Is that what we do? Just lie down and let them do what they want with us? They threatened to destroy Utrecht. We had no choice. Utrecht is just a town. Old buildings. Beautiful old buildings, but it's not our... It's not our... What? Our soul? What good are bricks and mortar if we were reduced to slaves? Utrecht, Utrecht contains our history, our art, perhaps it was a hollow threat, and we will not be reduced to slaves. I cannot think that. Reduced to slaves? Ridiculous. Really? You really think so? And you sure you, you brought nothing to drink? No liquor at all? Damn. Typical of you. Your head is in the clouds, struggling with Nietzsche, sparring with Spengler and Marx. You would not have time to think of anything as trivial as drink. Victor, they will not destroy our culture. We are related, cousins, brothers, our names are German, our ancestry intermingles. Surely they will just administer, just manage things. They will ensure the trains run on time. They might even bring some of that German efficiency to our poor civil service. It could certainly use a little German efficiency. Why did they wait so long, Peter? It's been 10 months since they invaded Poland and the English declared war. 10 long months. 10 long months. They waited. The English waited. The French sat on their hands. The Germans waited. Why? I cannot answer that. I trust they were looking for peaceful solutions. I imagine they were talking at the highest levels, trying to find some common ground. I must believe they were trying to avoid this. Sweet, naive friend. It's no wonder Helena fell in love with you. Not what they were doing. Not what he was doing at all. He was waiting to see if the Allies, if England, if France, if America would tell him to stop. Ha! They appeased him. Go ahead. Take the Balkans. I've always been troublesome, those Balkans. No, no, no. Nobody wanted another great war. I'm sure of that. Nobody wanted another war. We all remember. We all remember it. Oh, God, we all remember. No one could possibly want another war. The Germans have forgotten it. I cannot believe that. They are our cousins, our family. The German people suffered as much as anyone, perhaps more. We share the same heritage. They will not, they will not let, 
atrocities happen, destruction on that scale. We will not let that happen again. I'm sure of that. I'm sure. And have you decided? What is there to decide? To report. To report in the morning. It is an order. I see no other option. Yes, I will be reporting in the morning. So that's your intention? To report in the morning is order? That is their directive. All Dutch officers must report to City Hall by 9 a.m. tomorrow. <sighs> report to Gestapo headquarters. Yes, I'm afraid that is what they call it now. And just what do you think they will do with you when you walk in as ordered and surrender? I don't know. I don't know. Perhaps put us to work, a work camp maybe, or a position in the civil service, an administrative position. They need our skills and our languages. They need a functioning civil service. Or perhaps they will hang you in the laser plane. No, I cannot believe that. I cannot believe they would do that. What do you think they'll do when they discover you're part Jewish, my friend? What then? I don't know. I don't know. Besides, we are not sure of our family heritage. I explained that to Helena. It is only a rumor that a Jew lurks on our ancestry. Ah. So in order to save yourself, you would deny part of your Jewish heritage? No, I'm not, I'm not saying that. I would not do that. To do that would be, that would be... Wrong? Yes, quite wrong. Peter, they've placed restriction after restriction on the Jews in this Third Reich of theirs. Insidiously, one after another, they've stripped them of all their rights, of all their property, in a few short years. Where do you think this is heading? You understand Hitler's German. You listen to his speeches. Where do you think this is going? For Christ's sake, where do you think it's heading? I have understood his speeches as oration, politicians' exaggerations. I have not taken him literally, not literally. Seriously, yes, but not literally. He is but one man. One man. One small, angry. Deluded man. Surrounded by men much like him. Perhaps worse. Perhaps more mythology. And many do understand him literally. Take him literally. Surely not the intellectuals. The sophisticated. The educated. Yes. Their problem was they took him literally but not seriously. They thought he was a, a fool to be used for their own devices. They let him seize power. They thought he could be controlled. But the people, the German people, they are a very civilized, very modern people, they will not accept its enslavement or, or... Say the words, brother-in-law, say them. All right. Mass murder. They will not engage in such a thing. More faith than I, my friend. For that is becoming apparent. And let's hope for humanity's sake that you are right and I am wrong. And what about you, Will you don your uniform and join me tomorrow morning? Victor? Victor, will you present yourself as ordered? I don't think so, no. You can't be serious, Victor. It is a Gestapo order. Ah! There, you see? You're already obeying their orders. Ah, Hitler! That is unfair. That is so unfair. We are officers in an army that was defeated and we surrendered. They can order us here and there within reason. Within reason? Yes, according to the Geneva Convention. Need I quote it for you? Peter, you have such faith in ideas and words. You do not believe. Believe what? The truth, the sheer unvarnished truth about us humans. I doubt there is a sheer unvarnished truth, but go ahead. Enlighten me, brother in law, enlighten me. This conversation without a drink. It's not possible to talk about such things without a drink. Sit. Sit, sit, sit. Give me a minute. Maybe the owner of this wreck has something stashed away. Ah! First time lucky. Not much. Better than nothing. 
expression I imagine we'll be hearing frequently in the months to come. What expression? Better than nothing. Ah, well then, you are the optimist, not I. You know the star of the Belgians, don't you? That was a different time, different circumstances. No, no they made that choice. And they'll make it again. Either feed the troops, or feed the Belgians. No, they are not barbarians. Science, art, music, philosophy, the, the people of Beethoven, they are not barbarians. No, they're worse. They're worse than barbarians. A little crudeness, a little roughness, a little buffoonery. That wouldn't be so bad. That I could accept. They're, you know what they are? They're efficient. Since when has efficiency become a sin? Perhaps not a venal sin or a mortal sin, but it's a sin of context. Context? Yes! Context. Something your Pope knows little of, I'm afraid. Absolutes. Perhaps a sin from which we all suffer, absolutes. We all have our absolutes. Our Popes and Mullahs. Our Hitlers and Stalins. They all love their absolutes. They all love certainties. You are talking nonsense, and I can't let you refer to our Pope and Hitler in the same sentence. Victor, please. You know, the Pope warned Queen Wilhelmina of the attack to come. You know that, don't you? Yes, and there you have it. You have contradicted yourself. Our Pope warned of the German attack. Pope Pius is not a friend of the Nazis. He warned our Queen of the attack to come. Yeah, but he's complicit in all of it. And he's Pacelli, Giovanni Pacelli, that's your Pope's real name. How else would he know of the attack to come? How else would he know of Hitler's plans if he were not complicit in all of it? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he has spies, but I must believe this. I must believe that there is good in this world, that my church would not sacrifice the Jews, that my church would not make a bargain with the devil. Ah, oh, Peter, you'll make a good husband for Helena if they don't hang you in the Leyden's Platz. Leyden's Platz? <coughs> Soon to be renamed, I'm sure. And so you will come with me. Tomorrow? Yes, tomorrow, Victor? You must come as they requested. There is no other option. There's always refusal. Ah, Victor. You said it yourself. They are efficient. They will find you easily. They will hunt you down, and then, when they do... Execute me? Or imprison you. Execution, I should imagine. Disobey an order, I'm quite certain that requires execution in the Third Reich. So you will come with me. No. I will resist. I'll fight. Victor, we have no forests to hide, no borders to cross. You cannot fight them. Come with me. Surrender. Please, Victor. They are a civilized people, a Christian people. We will survive if we report tomorrow and live to build the future. Victor, do it for Helena, if not for yourself. For God's sakes, Victor! Shh! Sit down, sit down. I think I hear a patrol coming. Yes. Don't look. Look at your cards. Smile. They're harmless. Completely harmless. Look down. They're playing cards. <clears throat> Prost! Ah, Hitler! 
Wie geht's, meine Herren? Mucht uns Sieg, Sieg anschleißen. sometime in the future, as do all occupied nations eventually. Besides, I must stay alive to look after Helena. You got it the other way around, brother-in-law. Helena will be looking after you. And are not our borders arbitrary? Products of the whims of history, the carnage of many battles before this. Does it make any difference? Does it make any difference? We are all one, Victor. We are all humans under these stars. The language we speak now may disappear in a thousand years. Our borders may change as they have before, who knows? We must report tomorrow as ordered and work to make, work to make something good of this, something good for the generations to come. There is no point sacrificing yourself for a flag or a queen, no point at all. You turn into Jew, Peter? A gypsy? A mongoloid? A neighborhood boy who is mentally defective? How about your strange eccentric uncle? Would you turn him in? Would you turn them in? Of course I would not do that. You're going to be asked to. To be registered, to be documented, efficiently kept track of. Put on a list? No, to be got rid of. I cannot believe that. That level of depravity. It is not possible for a civilized people to sink so low. Registering? Yes, I understand. Knowing how many mentally handicapped reside in your community allows one to plan services to optimize care. It's <laughs> almost laughable, Peter. What you say is so sadly far from reality. I would be laughing if I didn't feel so nauseous. Then, perhaps there is no point in us talking. <sighs> Peter, I'm sorry. It's, it's not nausea. It's, you know what it is? It's fear. All right? I'm sorry. Sit, please. It's just, it's fear. I'm afraid. Please. Thank you. Peter, you know what your problem is? Enlighten me, brother-in-law. Enlighten me. You have faith. As do you, brother-in-law. As do you. Yes, but my faith does not blind me to reality. It does not blind me to the ways of man. Nor I know. But it can help us rise above this. To see some hope, some goodness for the future. This too shall pass. A bloody saint right before he's crucified that. A bloody saint! Don't call me that, Victor. Please don't call me that. You'd rather I call you a bloody fool? Yes. And time will tell which of us has been the more foolish. Time will tell. Unless you come to your senses and report with me tomorrow. That way we can be foolish together. The meek just might inherit the earth. No, no, no. At best, you're going to be on a bed of straw, on a dank hole. 
You'll, you'll hear whispers of death and atrocity. You won't know who survived. You'll know nothing of Helena's fate. That German civilization you admire so much. Their music, their art, their science. They'll obliterate music and art. They'll use their science to destroy efficiently. First, you'll take your name and they'll, they'll enter it in a large ledger. And they'll assign you a number, perhaps stamp it on you. You'll be heard into a train, a cattle car. You'll no longer be Peter Butk. You'll be a Craig's Gifimen, no more spine eins, even spine eins. You'll be processed efficiently. And you, Victor, if you refuse their order, if you choose to stay and fight, you will have to kill. Victor, you will have to kill men, soldiers, not generals, not Himmler himself, but boys, men younger than ourselves, our brothers. I'm an officer in an army. Oh my God, Victor. It was a way of paying for university. We are not warriors. We are not killers. Being warriors was never our wish. I think you're that different, Peter. In the same circumstances, we wouldn't be capable. You cannot have it both ways, Peter. One moment you're saying we're all brothers under the stars, members of the same tribe, the same species. But the next moment you're saying you cannot kill. They can kill, it's fine for them, but you cannot. I'm saying, I am trying to say, it is a matter of choice. We have a choice. Yes, yes we do. Two old friends in the here and now, in the spring air, we have a choice. We have a choice in the here and now, we have a choice. Yes, here at this moment, we have a choice. You miss your own lesson then, Peter. You miss your own lesson. What have I missed, Victor? Go ahead. You tell me then. What have I missed? Do you remember last summer before the invasion of Poland, sitting in the backyard of Helena? Remember that? Sasha trapped a small rap against the fence. That same lovely, sweet Sasha that licks children's faces. She tore that rabbit apart, Peter. She tore it to pieces. Elena was so distraught when she told me, she never thought she'd be able to forgive her sweet Sasha. She's a boxer, Sasha, a German breed. You missed the point, and you contradict yourself again. No. I know what you're trying to tell me, Victor. I know what you're trying to tell me. I know that we are all born with the same evil, the same potential for evil, the same inhuman quality, the same inhuman potential for depravity, the same willingness to kill, and it is all but an inch under the skin, a small inch under everyone's skin. Is that your message? Is that your message? No. Now then, what the hell is it? The same human quality, the same human potential. That is exactly what I said. You said inhuman. Inhuman. You're splitting hairs. No, no, no. no. You're saying this because you can't imagine that a civilized, educated people could fall that low. A Christian people. But you're saying that because you can't find it in yourself. Or you don't want to find it in yourself. That's because it is not there. We are not animals. We are human, Victor. We are human. That's my point exactly. I could not kill, Victor. I could not kill. You just won't let yourself find it, that's all. I would rather spend four years on a straw mat in a dank hole than find such evil in myself, than find no God, than lose my humanity. Maybe. Or maybe you're simply a coward. A coward? Yeah. You, may be right. You may be right, a coward, I suppose.
knows that is how some will see me. And you, Victor, you will be a dead hero. Oh, God. Jesus. That's it, then. We have little to discuss after all. I will go my cowardly way, and you will become a dead hero. May God have mercy on our souls. Peter, wait! It's not cowardice. It's, if anything, it's the opposite. It's what you want to do tomorrow morning, I think, I think it probably probably requires more courage. I hope what you want to come true will come true. I just, I want to believe what you want to believe. I just, I'm afraid you're going to suffer. I, I think what you're doing actually requires more courage, but I, I'm certain you're going to suffer more than I. This isn't about courage or cowardice. I think it has little to do either way. Either way, Victor. I am not giving up. Peter, if they ask about me, what would you tell them? Nothing. Of course nothing. If they torture you, if they threaten Helena, Victor, if you knew I was going to talk, Victor, if you knew that I would have to give you up, would you kill me? Would you be willing to kill me? I couldn't do that. But you suspect that I am weak? That if a jack-booted interrogator demands to know where you are hiding, I will tell him. By your logic, you should kill me. No. Ah! There. You see. It is not a part of you. It does not lie there, waiting to be reborn. It is acquired. It is an evil thing that some can acquire. You are not a, a dog with a cornered rabbit. You are not a, a predator. You are not mad. But I can acquire it if I must. I can acquire it. Are you sure? There. There you have it. Come with me tomorrow and report as ordered. Victor, come with me. Peter, perhaps I could kill you to protect myself. I, I don't know. None of us knows until we're actually there in the moment. But we see after the fact. We know after the fact. No, no, not even then. We, we tell ourselves stories. We, we don't ever actually learn the truth about ourselves. We, we rewrite our history. And you think the truth is that we are all capable of evil? No, not evil. Not evil, Peter. Re reversion. That's what we're capable of. Reversion. Reverting to animal instinct. Survival. Kill or be killed. Then we act. Then we kill. The remaining humanity afterwards, after the killing, after all the killing, the killing of the Jews and the gypsies, the children of Holland, the killing of the soldiers. You know what we do then? Seek absolution? No. No. We tell ourselves stories, myths. Bedtime stories, fantasies. We write a history to 
to justify what we've done. What bedtime story are we telling ourselves now, Victor? You, Peter, my friend, you're telling yourself that, that we're all God's children, members of the same tribe, the same species, and that the, the propagandists and the warmongers, they're, they're exaggerating the depravity of this all. And the man, a good man, a man with courage in his heart, that man, that man can survive, and that his, his innate goodness will become contagious. And that all these horrors and atrocities, these are all aberrations, and that sanity, sanity and kindness will prevail. And what bedtime story do you favor, Victor? Uh, I'll tell you. Sure. I can tell you that I have, I have my own fantasies, that I fantasize being a hero, and that I think there are times that we must fight, that we must take lives ourselves. I can tell you that. I can even tell you that I could possibly survive three years in a dank hole, living on a bed of straw, maybe even three years of forced labor, taking the long view of history. And that taking a long view of history is perhaps even sensible and honorable. I can tell you that. But I think the truth is actually simpler. A lot simpler. It just probably boils down to, I cannot for a moment stomach the idea of a Gestapo officer ordering me to do anything. I cannot stomach the idea of subservience. Not for a second. Not for a second. So you would choose to die instead? No. That's the other fantasy we tell ourselves. I could survive. Others will be killed, no doubt, but I'll probably survive. That borders on delusional, Victor. Does it really matter? I suppose one delusion is as good as another in these times. And in a few hours, we'll probably know. A few hours or a few weeks, years. Maybe we'll never know. And we may never meet again if you choose to stay and fight, Victor. I cannot come with you tomorrow morning. I cannot do it here. Then you will do what you must and I will do what I must. And that is, that is that. You go and be a hero, Victor. You go and do that. I will try to survive for a better day. Look after Helena, Peter. Look after my sister. I have some children. Raise them to be as gentle as you are. And you, Victor, try to stay alive. And perhaps, perhaps, perhaps something good will come from this. A new generation will emerge that will never let this happen again. We have the same dream, Peter. We share the same dream. Then it is time to say goodbye. Please try to stay alive. Peter, I have one more question. I'm sure I have no answers. Do you think there was a time, a time before all this, you could have perhaps prevented it? I doubt we could have prevented this. Not you and I, Peter, but everybody. The German people, the politicians, we all saw it, Peter. We all saw it coming. No, we didn't. We are not capable. We are not capable of... No, I have
have that wrong, I think. Some of us are capable of seeing where each small step is taking us, where each small crime might lead. But we all know how to look away, Victor. We all know how to look away. We look away. Stop travel from seven Muslim countries. And? And what? Isn't that enough? Enough of what? He's protecting our country. Oh, from what, Peter? From what? Ha. You can't say it, can you? Islamic terrorism. Islamic terrorism. No one from those seven countries has committed an act of soil on our Peter. Did I say that? You know damn well what I'm talking about. Yeah. There's been no terror committed by any of those people. The point is that now they won't get the opportunity. He's threatened Iran, he's threatened North Korea, he's deregulated the banks. He is our democratically elected president. Oh, that sounds familiar. Just like Adolf? Oh, if you're going down that road, there's no point in us having this discussion. Tell me, just out of curiosity, what does Helena think about this clown going after abortion? Well, she's a good Catholic, Victor. She's conflicted. And a bunch of old men telling her what she can or cannot do with her body? Not conflicted on that point. She's certainly not conflicted on that point. Oh, it's so fucking regressive. It's so fucking regressive. Half the people don't agree with you. Yeah, well, half the people are fucking morons. Now who's the tyrant? All right. But if I had the power, they'd be citizens needing education. Oh, so now you're chairman Mao? No, but this man is dangerous. Can't you see that? We have the courts. We have a free press. He's undermining them bit by bit, step by step. He'll use a, a violent reaction, and he'll, he'll use that to gain power, emergency measures or some shit He's like that. He's not clever enough to plan something like that. Yeah, but it's the same process, don't you see? You seal off the borders, then you get the Jews, the Muslims, whoever to register. Use the local police to enforce this, block the press, bypass the courts. No, it would take a war to justify such emergency measures. Yeah, precisely. Why do you think he's threatening Iran, threatening North Korea? Stop, Victor. I'm, I'm tired of this. No one can be that stupid and evil. You think so? One crazed Serbian killed the Archduke 100 years ago. That's all it took. We have a strong democracy. In four years, we vote again. When's it going to be too late, Peter? Because it's going to be too late, you know. What do you want from me? What the hell do you want from me? We're lobsters on a pot on the stove, right? We watch our comedians ridicule them, we, we laugh and smirk, we trade stories, but we don't ever notice the temperature rising. Look, he's a buffoon. He's not Hitler, he's not Stalin, he's Berlusconi. Maybe. But the people around him, they'll use him to gain power. And then he'll bring his family in, just like every other crazed despot in this world. I'm tired of this, Victor. I'm tired of the argument. I will drink my coffee, I will go to work in the morning, and I will try to avoid the news. I'm sick of listening to it anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I look away, I see nothing, I see nothing. That is unfair. That is grossly unfair. We all voted. That's that. Our institution should be strong enough. There are safeguards. Yeah, so we just sit around and watch the progress of the last 50 years go down the drain? Gender equality, racial equality, health care, the environment, the whole fucking shooting match. There's nothing to be done, Victor. Nothing to be done. You think your shining beacon of goodness will be enough? Kindness, forbearance? You think that'll be enough to protect the future of your children? Sarcasm is the refuge of the limited mind, brother. Ah, oh, you can be a sanctimonious prick, you know that? A sanctimonious prick. And you're an asshole. You're just itching to pick a fight with someone. If I'm an asshole, I'm an asshole who wants to stop this blight, this horror that's unfolding. You don't know it's a horror unfolding. You don't know that. You think he's Santa Claus in the Seventh War? Oh, don't insult my intelligence, Victor, please. Even if you're right, even if you're right, 
our institutions will protect us. Our checks and balances, our courts, our free press, our fourth estate. Fourth estate? You don't be speaking French. That's fake news, my friend. Haven't you heard? Very fake news. He's venting. That's all. No one takes him literally, seriously, but not literally. He's undermining your precious fourth estate. He doesn't need Nuremberg rallies. He's got Twitter. And when he does do a rally, the very media he rants about, they come, they cover it, he shows it to the world. You keep going there. You keep fulfilling Godwin's law. There's no Holocaust here. There's no killing of Jews. You can't make that comparison. It suffocates sensible discussion, and it trivializes the actual Holocaust. Give me a fucking break. The Holocaust is the end game. We're in the first stages of the final unraveling. This is 1934 all over again. But maybe this time we can prevent it. You don't know that. A swing to the right, four years, big deal. This is a democracy. We live in a democracy. It is what apparently the people wanted. He is what they wanted. This may galvanize the left, and in four years, we'll swing back. Have faith, my friend. Have some faith. You don't know what they wanted. They didn't vote for him. They voted against her and Obama. They were hurting. Hurting? <laughs> they were enraged. He found their racist little angry amygdalas and fired them up. He told them who to blame. Yeah like Hitler. Oh, you won't give it up, will you? Our democracy is 200 years old. It can survive four years with that idiot in the White House. This is not 1934. All democracies are fragile. They're not tyrant proof. He'll put himself above the law and we'll accept it. No. It'll happen. No. Even his own party will not allow that. That will tear them apart. No, not if it serves their own interests. There are people there. There are people there who... Who what? Integrity. Principle. That's what I'm looking for. People who would bullshit, resign long- Bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. You are just as, as... As what? Not one of those people has stood up at the microphone and said, this is enough, I resign. Not one of them. They can't see beyond their own fuck whatever. They're not all crazy. They're not all racist. Don't you see it in their eyes? Eight years they lived under a black president. They're simmering with hatred. Okay, so who is it? If 2018 is 1934, if we're back in 1934, who's on the list? Muslims, Jews, Hispanics, blacks. Make up your mind, Victor. Make up your mind. That's the point. It doesn't matter. Jews, blacks, Muslims, Hutus, Tutsis, Rohingyas. It's the other. You stir up that tribal rage, it can be used in anyone, anything. No, 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 no. We are an advanced nation. We're not Rwanda for Christ's sakes. We're not primitive. We're evolved past that, no. way past that. What total fucking bullshit. Bullshit again. Yes, absolute fucking bullshit. There's no point talking with you. There's really no point talking with you. You're as pig-headed as they are. You're as bigoted as they Don't are. Don't you see You're what's fucking happening? We are the same fucking people who left the old Dave Gorge and migrated across the Sahara. Same fucking people who slaughtered the Armenians, enslaved the Africans, burnt the Vietnamese, starved the Ukrainians. Same fucking people who took part in holy wars, took up arms against one another. Same fucking people who always look away. We look away. If this is coming, as you say, if this experiment is ending, if we're all falling back into some form of tyranny, if enlightenment has run its course, Victor, if this is happening, as you say it is happening, then what do you want of me? What do you want of me? Do you want me to take up arms, Victor? You think that if we take up arms, that'll make any difference? For God's sakes, Victor! No. Then what? 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 Nothing. What do you want?
What do you mean, nothing? I thought you wanted to protest, march in the street. It's too late. What the hell is going on, Victor? What the hell has happened? Victor, talk to me. What the hell has he done now? Victor, what the hell has he done now? 